Doug, thanks for joining us, my man, as always. How are you doing? Hey, good, guys. Always a pleasure to be on with my favorite conservative, J.D., and my fellow bisexual liberal, Brian. <laughs> yes. I love it. Now, that love was it. a great intro, Doug. Thank Doug, you I, I will be honest. I am attracted to your hair. I, I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be completely honest with you. All right, so let's let's. Uh, I, I I hate to joke no, around. No, Doug, you could seriously <laughs> pass for Brian's dad. He could actually. <laughs> no, he well, really you know, could. When I heard Gary's call, it was very ironic because I just recently found out that I'm bisexual. <laughs> I only have sex twice a year, and at that, I have to buy it. <laughs> That's funny. Well, tell Stormy Daniels I said hello. I hope it didn't cost you $120,000. Uh, before we get to politics, Doug, and, and, and maybe this story is about politics, but I wanted to get your thoughts on this uh, for a moment. Uh, obviously, the Ahmad Arbery case, what took place in Georgia, I consider it a lynching. Um, what are your thoughts on this case in general? Where do you see this going? Are you surprised that those two men, it took them two months to arrest them? What are your thoughts on this case as a whole? I'm not surprised at all. And, you know, I was completely with you on the lynching part. But then when I heard you say that he had baggy pants on, I mean, I had to reconsider. <laughs> I hate to laugh about it. I mean, about, had, yeah. you know, the but only you're right. thing it's that would have clinched it is if he had a hoodie, too. You know what? You're right. Sadly, you're right. It's it, it's well, sad and, and pathetic. He, he may have had skittles in yeah. his back pocket. I mean, what yep. do you make? What do you make of, you know, the attorneys that are representing some of these people, uh, the the police officers, the cover up? It appears as though as this is a huge cover up from start. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully not to end. What do you make of the neighbors? Uh, it it just, it just seems to me that this was a kid. That really wasn't doing anything wrong. Uh, he was wandering around a construction site. I, I did stuff like that when I was a kid. He was sure. 25, but he wasn't breaking any laws. And then there are some on the right that want to make the story about him wandering through a construction site like that is uh, like that is a reason to get murdered. Or worse, when Trump brought it up and said, "Well, there's a little blind spot in the tape." Well, well what do you think the kid was doing? That's such a great you know, point you brought that up. Nothing he could have done yeah. when he went out of. Uh, out of the screen for a few seconds that warranted him being shot and killed. Why would Trump say something like that? Why not just stick to thoughts and prayers for the family? This is a horrible tragedy. And even if he said, let's wait and let the court system play itself out, I would have been okay with that. Why well, does he I have to the go there? To that because A, he's a garbage human being, and B, he was throwing red meat to his base. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I agree with you. I mean, the fact that he would, you know, and listen, I don't I'm not in no way, shape or form am I saying if you're a Trump supporter, you're a murderer. But what I am saying is, do you think the fact that uh, one of the McMichael father or as I like to call them, the McClans, there are pictures of this McMichael. That's what they are. McClans. Uh, there's pictures of him wearing Trump hats. Do you think Trump might have seen a picture like that? And that might have had something to do with his response the other day. I think his response would have been the same hat or no hat. Because that's just who he is. Yeah, uh, sadly, sadly, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I think there's a lot of ignorant, racist people in that part of the country, uh, and I hope the McClans get what they deserve. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they clearly hunted Ahmad Arbery down as if yep. he was an animal, and it was murder one, in my opinion. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a very clear cut case. It doesn't make a difference if he's in a house, even if even if it's a one million dollar house, maybe it's the biggest house neighborhood's ever seen. Who cares? Right. He wants to walk through it and see what's going on. It's not like he was casing it. There, there was maybe there was a couple tools in there. What are those worth? Okay. One hundred and fifty bucks. I mean, I'm it doesn't gonna, it doesn't make any right. sense. I'm going to pull back though on what you said. On what? Uh, and trust me, you know how I feel about these two idiots. I hope they spend the rest of their lives in prison and suffer. With that being said, I'm not sure it's a clear-cut murder one case. Here's why. And, Doug, you could tell me if you agree or disagree with me on this. Again, I am not defending these two. I think it was murder. It was a lynching. With that being said, I'm talking about the law. Even if they're chasing him with guns, and even if they were the reason, and clearly they were, why this kid lost his life, he did go after them, and I don't blame him for doing this, by the way. He did. It's not like they just shot right out of the truck. So I'm speaking from a legal standpoint. I think it might be difficult to convict them on murder one. What do you say to that, Doug? Well, it might be given where it happened, but I think a strong case could be made that anything he did was in self-defense because he saw the other people had guns. And yeah, exactly. 
I don't disagree. He, he saw two people that were not police officers who did not have the authority right. to, to drive up on him with guns, and, and the pursuit of him alone was assault. And after that, I believe that Doug is right, that everything he did was in self-defense. No, listen, I'm on both of your sides here, obviously. I want these two to be uh, – listen, if these two were uh, – you know, uh, you know, beaten up and, and, and gagged and raped every day for the rest of their lives, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Let me just be very clear on that. That was very graphic, uh, Well, you know what? I'm being honest with you. I, I hope they suffer every day for the rest of their lives. With that being said, I, I don't know if it's as clear-cut as you say, but I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I hope it is clear-cut. All right, Doug, let's move on to some bigger and, and uh, you know, I shouldn't say bigger and better. Uh, these are all difficult stories to talk about, including the Arbery case. But my understanding is that you've done a little bit of research when it comes to this Wuhan lab, and we're trying to figure out, was this done on purpose? Was this accidental? Who exactly threw it under the rug? Who do we blame? What can you tell us, Doug? Well, first of all, the $3.7 million grant was not given to the Wuhan lab. I don't know if you guys saw 60 Minutes this weekend. It was given to Echo Health. Yeah, e Echo Health Alliance yeah. and Peter yeah. Dashak. Yep. That funding was renewed in, in 2019 by Donald Trump. And then Matt Gates goes on Fox and starts a rumor, an unfounded rumor, about a $3.7 million grant to the Wuhan lab, and, and the funding is canceled. Meanwhile, that was not the case. It was given to Peter Daszak and his organization. He gave some money to China to have access to that Wuhan viro virology lab so that he could get some of their materials and, and uh, research. But it was just a, you know, a few thousand dollars. The grant was not given to the Wuhan lab, and that's been done. Uh, that was exposed on 60 Minutes. It's also been exposed by factcheck.org and politifact.com. And my issue with, with Fauci involved with, with that is, you no, know, he's he's been considered. And the reason why, like, for example, Barbara Ferrer from the California Public Health, she went out yesterday and she she quoted Fauci. And she said, you know, b you know based after, after what Anthony Fauci said, where if, if these cities open too fast, there could be a surge in cases. And then she decides to shut down Los Angeles for 90 days. My issue with Anthony Fauci is he's being considered you know, the, the top vir virologist in the United States, which is why, you know, like Rand Paul, when, when he called him the, the end all be all, that's, I believe, what he was referencing. But Anthony Fauci, if, if you're, you know, he's, he's headed the National Institute of Health for a long time. He's been involved with the last seven administrations before Donald Trump. He's been involved with, with HIV and SARS. So obviously he has a very good idea of what's going on in that lab, because I'm sure you, I'm sure you researched the lab, not just the, the Echo Health grant, but but you have to look, Doug. I mean, that lab was the only place in China that is a biosafety four level lab, which means, and that's out of 1.2 billion people, which is a really big deal. But that means that they can actually work on viruses in that lab that don't have cures. So I'm shocked that Anthony Fauci, after finding out about this virus, didn't take into consideration, hmm. I wonder if this actually did escape from this lab that was a mile away from the wet market, and I'm and I'm I'm very disappointed that he but just let that you, Jay, that he just let that say, story go out. You use the phraseology "escape from the lab." Are you inferring that it was created there? I'm I'm inferring that they were studying bats inside the lab. They've isolated that particular virus, and it got on someone who worked there's hands or infected them accidentally, and they and then they infected. I'm not saying it was manufactured on purpose. I'm saying it was accidental. But I don't understand why Anthony Fauci, because he obviously knew everything that was going on in that lab. I'm curious, as did the Chinese government, but I'm curious why he would let that possible story go out to the to the to the American public, that said this originated in a wet market. When all I mean, it, it would have to be a massive, massive coincidence for that to take place, considering the fact that the only bio biosafety level four lab in the entire country of China was a mile away from that wet market. Well, I understand what you're saying, but since then, our own virologies have studied the coronavirus and said that it is very consistent with viruses that transfer from animal to human being. And they have essentially come out and said there's no way this was created. As for it getting out of the lab, if it was indeed transferred from uh, an animal or a bat to a human being, right. that was when the damage was done, long before it got to the lab. Well, and, and what I'm saying is I think that they had the, they had the, vat, the, the bat, they brought it inside the lab, they found, they found the coronavirus, they isolated that virus. 
and they didn't transfer. And so the actual virus didn't get transferred from the bat to the human being until it was isolated and to actually turn to be, you know, human transmissible in, in a, you know, an efficient amount of human transmissible. And I well, think that okay, An let, Anthony Fauci that most likely knew right. that. My next question would be, yeah. so what? Well, I don't understand why Anthony Fauci would, would let that, that whole that whole narrative go out that it actually originated in the Wuhan wet market when it most likely, considering the circumstances, originated inside but that again, biosafety that level four lab. A without a distinction? I mean, look at the damage it did, regardless of where it started. Well, and, and you can attribute that to just the, the Chinese information, the fact that they I weren't. I think this is kind of a, shiny, a, a, a bright light that we're shining to distract from, from what really matters in this. And, and what, what matters in this, Doug? What matters the most is the inaction Donald Trump took. I mean, no one in this country is blaming Donald Trump for the virus, whether it came from the wet market, whether it came from the Wuhan lab, irrelevant. What we are blaming Donald Trump for is all the warnings he got in January and February, and he thought it was more important to go do rallies, attend fundraisers, tweet, watch cable TV, than take any action. Well, you know, by the same logic, we could say that the Democrats thought it was more important to try to impeach the president based on false pretenses. We could, we could do that too. We could talk yeah, about how, how Pelosi, how Pelosi made statements. We could talk about Anthony Fauci making statements to remove him because it probably would have saved a lot of lives. We could talk about Anthony Fauci making statements on January 26th and February 26th saying that the virus was most likely not efficient, human, human, human transmissible and would not be a giant problem for the United That's States. That's actually not what he said. I, I he did, he did say that. But obviously I can't play it now because I'm on the phone. He, all he said was, at this point, you don't need to change what you're doing as long as you keep doing what the CDC advises. Uh, okay, and, and, the C no and the CDC. CDC that, that's all been blown out of proportion and changed and twisted to suit the right-wing narrative. That's not what he said. Okay, and the CDC, in the process of trying to develop tests, they had a contamination problem in their lab, which was discussed last month, and that basically set things back a month or two months is that Donald Trump's fault? Well, no. What set us back is the fact that Donald Trump, unlike other countries, quote unquote leaders, did not take immediate action and, and engage the private sector to start working on tests. That's what he should have been doing in January, February, and March. Well, no, he did. What, the the, the CDC was really the one that was putting together that developing that baseline test. Everybody immediately. Everything else has to be FDA approved, but the CDC was putting together that baseline test, and again, they had a problem in their lab, which set everything back. Now, what about Donald Trump stopping travel to China on February 2nd? I realized that he did let uh, you know, American citizens that were in China come back, and there was about 40,000 of them, but what about that? How, how can you not c consider that action, Doug? Well, I mean, obviously it was an action. The point is, was it an effective one? And considering that other countries had already discovered the first cases it was pointless and then he didn't then he didn't ban travel from europe until like the middle of march and even then he only did it in the the countries that are in the Schengen area where there's supposedly no border he still he didn't do it for 21 other european countries or england or ireland uh, my so, personal I mean, all, th this yeah this whole canard of him saying i shut the country down he did nothing of the sort and we now know that the virus infection in New York came from Europe. And Mayor de Blasio on March 3rd went as far as to say, you know, New Yorkers, just live your life. They're, they're, don't worry about it. Everything will be okay. Don't, don't, don't be afraid to go out and do what you do. And then suddenly New York obviously is the epicenter the of the virus is, on the planet. Right. The difference, does that absolve Donald Trump from all no, his no, inaction no. in January? Well, I mean, but, but how, how, many cases, how, many, how many cases were in the United States at that time? You know, outside of the Diamond Princess cruise ship. And then we find out that most likely the virus has been here since either December or January, especially on the West Coast, considering the antibody tests, the positive results that have come back from people that, uh, that have been sick, like at way, CES, as far et cetera. As Blasio is concerned, he didn't yeah. get 12 briefings from, his, from the collective 17 agencies in our intelligence community in January and February warning about a global pandemic. Trump did and did nothing. And Anthony Fauci, again, told him on multiple occasions that it was not, as, as well as who did not the World Health Organization did not go public until January 23rd and say this virus is human to human transmissible despite the fact that China knew it was as early as December 9th most likely at the behest of China at the recommendation of China 
by his own intelligence community that this could be a global pandemic. I, but, I don't know why you're pointing at everybody else. We have one president, one commander-in-chief, one person in charge. The buck should stop there. And if it was a Democratic president, you're damn right. The buck would stop there. And again, he's not a doctor. He's not a health specialist. So I'm, I'm bringing up who? I'm bringing up Fauci because Donald Trump is not well-versed in those particular areas. He not was well listening, he was listening to the World Health Organization, which he funded at $500 million a year. He was listening to Anthony Fauci. He was listening to the specialists, as far as he knew, were specialists about this. And the information that they were given was not correct. And that has to do with China. To the specialists now, he's pushing for states to reopen that haven't even satisfied his own guidelines. And the guidelines are changing. Obviously. <laughs> okay. Can I just chime in and then just I just want to say one thing. Then I want sure. to, I want to move on. Uh, I don't believe Donald Trump is well versed in anything. I just wanted to. No, make that, that makes sense. Yeah, perfect. I just wanted to They're make great. that very clear. Very, right. very. He is Doug, uh, effective and relevant. Uh, I think it is. He's no, not ab- absolutely this, this or anything. Uh, he is Doug Basham, uh, the only liberal talk show host in. How about America, adultery in Las Vegas? Is, is he well versed in adultery? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. He's actually he's actually a scholar when it comes to okay. that. Okay. Uh, all right. So I want to talk a little bit about a uh, right wing. Uh, he, he graduated from Trump University, so he must. You be mean Wharton? Wharton yeah. School of Business. I want to talk a little bit uh, about Shelley Luther. Uh, those uh, people on the right are using Shelley Luther as the poster child of being some sort of hero when she is an ignorant buffoon and a liar. Let me explain, folks. Uh, she is the owner of the Salon a la Mode in Dallas. She is the person who defied an order and kept her business open because she claimed she wanted to put food on the table for her family. Uh, she goes to court. She refuses to apologize to the judge. Uh, basically attacks the judge, and the judge says, all right, I'm throwing you in jail for a week. I wish she was still in jail. Well, now we're learning that she's a liar. Now, I said she was a liar and a phony a week ago. Why did I say that? Because she went on a media tour, and she was painted out as some sort of hero uh, on the self-promotion of her store. She said it was all about her and her employees. Well, guess what? It wasn't about putting food on the table for her. First of all, she's fairly well off, okay? She's not homeless, number one. Number two... Here's something that the right-wing media failed to talk about. Guess what? She received $18,000 in stimulus funds from the federal government prior, let me repeat that, prior to her court date. Boy, you could put a lot of food on the table with $18,000, but the owner said she didn't know it went into her account. This is the doofus and the poster child for the hero that the Sean Hannity's of the world are painting out to be some sort of hero. Doug, what do you make of this lying buffoon? Well, not to mention the $500,000 that was raised in a GoFundMe effort for her. I thought the best part of this story was Ted Cruz, the Canadian senator from Texas, <laughs> Rafael Eduardo Cruz. He calls himself Ted, so he doesn't sound too Mexican-y. He flew from Houston to Dallas to get his hair cut at this, this Shelley Luther's place. It was the the most god awful haircut he's ever gotten. <laughs> I mean, when he walked out of that place, I mean, he looked like somebody put a bowl on his head and just shaved around it. I mean, it was the worst haircut. Well, that's because she hasn't had a lot of practice. She, he yeah. looked like he looked like Jim Carrey from Dumb and yeah. Dumber. That's that's what he looked he'll like. He'll go back in three months. She'll have some more practice. It'll be better. But Doug, the premise yeah, a little rusty. Keep her the clothes just for the quality of the haircut she gives. <laughs> Doug, the premise of this that there are dumb people throughout the country that would donate upwards of $500,000 to a woman who lied. She lied to everybody. She said she was struggling to put food on the table. She certainly uh, looks like she's eating just fine. Her family's doing just fine. Uh, She received an $18,000 stimulus, yet she claimed she didn't know it entered into her bank. She didn't know. What person wouldn't know that, number one? That leads me to believe she probably has a lot of money if that was true, which I don't think it is. And she lied to the judge. She lied to the American people. She used this as a scam. Why won't anybody on the right call her out for what she is, which is a scam artist? Well, I mean, this whole thing, Shelley Luther never would have become who she has become if it wasn't for the power of Trump's state-run propaganda ministry, a.k.a. Fox and Right Wing Hate Radio. They turned her into a, a celebrity, and everybody gets, I mean, these people are sheep. Fox tells them that this girl is a hero. They spend their money freely. When it turns out she's a scam, they just sweep it under the rug and wait for the next slide. They've been doing that for years, long before Donald Trump came into office. 
And You're every right. time it's proved that Donald Trump is a scam artist or a serial liar, they sweep it under the rug or they attack – because they can't attack the message, they attack the messenger, and that's what they're doing with Dr. Fauci right now. And, and I want to make – Wuhan lab. I agree. Or the WHO I, or China. And I want to make another point, Doug, uh, talking about the way the right has handled this story and the Ahmaud Arbery story, right-wing radio. There are some nationally syndicated, local and nationally syndicated radio hosts that have not even mentioned – the Ahmad Aubrey story. They haven't even spoken about it. And yet they've taken hours, hours, and, and, and talked about Shelley Luther, the scam artist, painting her yeah. out to be some sort of hero. The disgusting, and, and you know, they want to attack CNN. They want to attack MSNBC. They want to attack the fake news media. Where were they talking about the Samad Arbery story? And look at how they handled the Shelley Luther story. That is a perfect example of my disgust for the way sometimes the way the right covers news stories themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's another example of dangling you know, a shiny object in front of their audience to distract from what they should be covering, namely Donald Trump's failures in this virus. Doug, quick question for you. What comes of Obamagate, in your opinion? Say that again. What do you think becomes of Obamagate, the results of it? That's a good question. I don't know that the Supreme Court is going to be willing to take health care coverage away from millions of people. They weren't the last time they looked at it, and I'd be surprised if they did this time. Well, I'll tell and you I what. The main that, you story think is in the JD middle meant of the pandemic, Donald Trump is still involved in that lawsuit to get rid of Obamacare, even though his fellow Republicans are telling him this is kind of risky. All right. Well, uh, Doug, I appreciate, uh, as always, you coming on. Uh, love your show. I'm a big fan of it. I listen to it every Saturday from 2 to 4 p.m. right here on KDWN. My favorite part of your show is when you get into it with callers that disagree with you. And I enjoyed the debate today. I do I do really respect how you have a lot of good information. You are very, very knowledgeable about the things that you believe in. And uh, thanks for coming yeah, on, Doug. Uh, Doug does his homework. Doug, always appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Hey, always my pleasure, guys. Stay safe. Stay safe. Be well. Same to you. And uh, by the way, uh, sooner or later, I think Doug should get a haircut at Shelley Luther's uh, Salon a la mode. That would be a lot of hair. And J.D. <laughs> meant, uh, J.D. was talking about Obamagate, uh, which is now this, this name for this uh, right, right. FBI scandal involving the Obama administration. But it's also good to get uh, uh, Doug's comments on Obamacare. No